Thank you so much, Christian. And it's a pleasure and honor to be hosting today's session alongside Up Education, our longstanding partners. Um, and it's great that all of you have made time to join us here today. So a very good morning, salam apagi, uh, good afternoon. And to those of you joining from the evening as well, thank you so much for joining today. So um, as Christian said, my name is Ryan Gammon. I'm one of the international managers here at New Zealand's leading research-led university, the University of Auckland. And what we wanted to do today was take you on a nice tour of the Faculty of Engineering. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and show you as much as I can today. Uh, but, but just so you all know that we will be hosting uh, more tours like this alongside Up Education in the near future as well. Um, as Christian did say, please do pop your questions in the chat box function. And what um, I can ask Christian or one of the other um, Up Education team members to do is if there is a relevant question for everyone and maybe you want to ask me out loud, uh, please feel free to do so, Christian, and I'll do my best uh, to answer that question for you. But before I take one more step, I do just want to show you this amazing view because here in a very sunny Auckland, wow, that glare is very bright. If you can see the Auckland Tower there in all of its glory. So hopefully you get a nice view. So I'm just here outside our old or our normal um, Faculty of Engineering building. So this is our one that we've had for quite a long time, probably the last 30 years. Um, and today we're gonna go have a look around most predominantly our brand new engineering building. So without further ado, let's go for a nice little walk. <laughs> and again, please do ask me questions along the way uh, because that's what I'm here for. So how, how long is uh, for, I mean, for up education students to go to the uh, Faculty of Engineering, Ryan? How far is yeah. it? Yeah, so it's, so if you're studying at the um, up education building, which is probably about a 10 minutes walk mm -hmm. from the engineering faculty, um, so not long at all. And if you've got quicker legs than me, then I'm sure you can do it in a shorter distance of time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But li listen, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn my camera around. Oh. Hopefully you can still hear me, right? Is that OK? Yep. Perfect. All good. And if I just show you here on the left, this building here, that's our careers development and employability service. OK, oh, that's okay. our Kate Egder building. So it's a massive, massive team. And that's because we take employability really seriously here at the University of Auckland. So literally, as soon as when students start their program at the University of Auckland, um, they'll have a dedicated um, member of the careers development and employabilities team mm. who really do help students with those skills and building those soft skills throughout their whole program. And it's a service actually that can be used by students even three years after their studies. So it's um, a really, really awesome team. And, uh, you know, we advise all students to utilize that service as soon as they start their program with us. Now, in the middle there, you'll notice that there's a gap. And that's because we're building a brand new recreation build, uh, building, uh, which should be completed by 2024. Um, oh. And what we mean by recreation is huge gym facility, um, lots of fantastic spaces for students to get together. That's our arts faculty, by the way, sorry. Um, oh. and, over the, and over there is the library. Um, so this is all the University of Auckland campus, just so you know. Just down here, this is the business school. So that's ONG Glen building. And then as we walk past here, this is the brand new design building as well. It's actually attached to the engineering building, just so you know. And now we're walking up to the brand new 401 engineering building. Also the old building is quite near to the new building, right? Yes, it's next door. Mm. Next door. <laughs> Very conveniently placed, yeah. So that's ONG Glen, that's mm. the business school. And then as we make our way here, this is the brand new engineering building. There's 11 stories high, which for Auckland standards is a, is a large building. Um, there's not many buildings which are actually higher than 11 stories, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, it's a colossal building. And again, I'll just show you from here. There you go. And we're going to come in here. So let's go. Apologies if my camera's slightly unstable whilst I'm walking. 
now we're ready. Now we're ready. Uh, trying to keep my hands still as much as possible. <laughs> but Naimai, welcome to the Faculty of Engineering. Here we go. Okay. So it's a really exciting time actually for students right now because we're at the start of our semester two. Um, and this week is actually orientation week. So we might mm. see groups of students um, okay. hovering around, but right now there's not many students on campus simply because classes actually begin next week. But this is okay. the entrance. Anyway, uh, sorry, Ryan, for... before you start. Yeah. So I, mm -hmm. I recognize that um, everyone there is not wearing any uh, mask. So is it safe now in Auckland? Yes, it's a very okay. simple answer to your question. Yeah. yeah. So really lucky here in New Zealand in that mm -hmm. they've been able to contain the virus and essentially they've contained it at the border. So um, all uh, entering visitors into the country have to go through MIQ. Uh, it's mandatory. And so therefore, um, you know, people are not released from MIQ until obviously they, they produce um, clear results mm -hmm. uh, from having a COVID-19 test um you know we are one of the strictest places in the world currently right now um mm. but that pays dividends now because life is back to normal so we're currently at um, level one uh, and that means there's really no restrictions in place um so even in the class the the students didn't have to wear a mask that's correct yeah oh wow. yeah that's and if great. we're lucky there might be some classes happening today so i can show you um but let me just show you one of the mdls rooms uh, very quickly so just to give you an idea in engineering, so normally uh, in other subjects such as arts or business, for example, students would do classes where you'll have a lecture and a tutorial. And that's essentially the, you know, the, the main components of, of your classes here at the Faculty of Engineering. Classes are normally you have lectures, you have tutorials, you will have uh, lab sessions or workshop sessions. And mm -hmm. um, to basically accommodate those workshop sessions, we have what's called multidisciplinary learning spaces. So really, really cool spaces which allow us to be very, very flexible in the room, move the tables around, create different spaces and environments for students to learn. Um, now, what I'm going to do is we're going to walk through here and I'm just going to show you some more stuff. I'll show you some labs. I'll show you some more MDLS rooms. Um, and some other cool stuff along the way. I do have to quickly show you this though, because this is really, really cool. So when students are here, we have lots of different, lots of uh, different clubs and societies. And you'll see here that this is reserved for the soccer robot team. So basically students probably from mechanical, from electrical and electronic engineering, um, they put to use uh, their new skills, their new talents, and they build little soccer robots and they compete against each other just here, uh, which is always quite fun and exciting to watch when you're walking through. This here is another club and society in the Faculty of Engineering. Again, this is available to all undergraduate students. And essentially, you know, in engineering, what we're trying to do for our students is really give them, yes, the theoretical skills that they need, but also allow them to apply that in as many ways as possible. And one of those ways is via the Formula SAE team. Mm -hmm. um, and they build these race cars, uh, these race cars every year from scratch. Okay. Um, uh, so Ryan, if a student <laughs> yeah. wants to take like automat uh, automotive engineering, so is it? Do they go Mechan to the mechanical? Right. Yeah, comes un Engine. comes under mechanical. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay. what's really interesting about this is, I mean, look at all of the sponsors. So every year there's amazing sponsors who sponsor the University of Auckland uh, race car team. Um, but literally, Christian students mm -hmm. from every single discipline in engineering uh, partake in this uh, club and society so even if oh. you're doing civil awesome you can awesome. apply you can apply skills but um, i'm telling you now they build it right from scratch um, so everything is custom made um, you know by the students uh, which is you know it's, it's a really really awesome thing and you're probably the next question you're going to ask me is who gets to drive the car and that was my first question as well. Um, there's five, <laughs> five, five, five drivers a year, um, and they have trials uh, every year. So really, really cool um, and exciting stuff. So now we're currently on level two in this building. So there's another nine floors after this. <laughs> we're not going to go up all nine floors, but don't worry. But this is one of the uh, laser cutting rooms uh, for our students. So as I said, sessions, lectures, tutorials, as part of their studies, as you can see there, that is the okay. MDLS Flexi Laser Cutters room. And students will do that because it could be part of their project. 
um, or it could be part of um, something else that they need to do. But let's go into one of these MDLS rooms. And with any luck, the light should turn on as I walk in. Fantastic. Oh. So, so here, what I just want to try and show you guys is if you look around, there's always a screen that students mm -hmm. can see. And that's, again, because we're trying to create an environment which, you know, all of us have, what, a 20-minute attention span. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. But, you know, with having screens in every viewpoint in the room, it really does allow to keep students' concentration levels um, a lot higher. Um, but essentially, these are places where um, students can come together in teams to complete assignments or exercises as part of their um, first year courses at the University of Auckland in the Bachelor of Engineering Honours programme. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's leave this room. And something that's, again, it's, it's, it's kind of cool, but um, in lots of places in the building, um, so that there'll be these screens which will indicate what classes are happening in what room, or it might indicate other events that might be taking place. There's no lights on in there. You actually only see my reflection, so that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Um, but in every point possible in the building, we try to make it so that you can see what's happening in the building. How does the building operate and function? Because mm. at the end of the day, again, this is just another piece of engineering. And so for our students, they can really, again, apply where possible those skills have learned in their classroom into the real world. How many um, students approximately uh, in a class, uh, Ryan? Oh, really good question. It does range. It really does depend on which classes that students take. Um, let me just turn this to me as we walk up. Um, so, you know, in first year, obviously, they're all, uh, all students are pretty much doing the same subjects. So, you know, classes, you know, tutorials are normally the much smaller sessions and you're probably looking between 20, uh, you know, 20, 25 students in those tutorial sessions. But in some of the lecture halls, you could have, um, you know, over 200 uh, students. So when students start specialising in years two, three and four, um, that's mm. when the class sizes become a lot smaller because mm. there's a lot more electives, a lot more choices for students to take where they can customise their own bachelor's programme. Mm. But in the first year um, is normally... The, the slightly more larger sizes because everyone's studying the same subjects. Oh, but I realized that, uh, I mean, UOA has the en engineering general major. So is it, mm -hmm. is that mean that the students will get all, a little bit of all majors in the engineering general? Uh, is it, yeah, it's a good question. Um, it allows students more flexibility to choose uh, a lot more different courses in different areas mm. but you just need to remember that there are prerequisites for a lot of those courses so if you're doing slightly more advanced i don't know mechanical courses they're going to require year two or use year three courses in mechanical mm. for you to take the more advanced subjects um, but yeah engineering general does allow students to be a lot more flexible in terms of what courses that they choose so i just said it can be you know you can do electrical you can do chemical materials you can do um you know, structural engineering or civil, uh, but just remember as you advance in those courses, it's likely that if you haven't got the prerequisites from years two or three, then you're not going to have the option of taking the advanced courses in those areas, which makes sense because you're not specialising in that area. Yeah. Um, I'll just Hi. quickly show you. Hi, Ryan. In every floor, we have one right? of these as well. Yep. Yeah. Of course you can. Uh, yep. I Far thought away. the engineering degree at, in the Auckland University the uh, first year is like student one entered the first year, uh, they will not choose their specialization yet. Uh, they will choose their specialization at the end of the first year, right? Yeah. Or, exactly. or do they yeah. have to choose at the beginning? No, that's, that's, um, that's correct. So um, students can select their specialization at the beginning, um, mm -hmm. but they're allocated their specialization at the end of the first year because there's only a certain amount of spaces for certain specializations for example one of the most popular specializations is software engineering um, now we have a thousand students who come into the beyonds every year so we can't have all 1000 students studying software engineering in year two so um, 
students will be placed into the specialization based on how well they perform in their first year. So you'll select one, you know, your first choice and probably your second choice. In most cases, students get their first choice um, or their second choice. So pretty confident that most students will get their first or second choice. Um, but again, it, you know, how, how students are allocated into those specialisations is based on how they perform in their first year, which is why it's important and why it's great that students go through foundation because it really does set them up for success. So once they've obviously, you know, this is a curriculum co-designed with UP Education and the University of Auckland, it really does uh, prepare students well uh, to make a great start in their first year of their undergraduate study at the University of Auckland and definitely help students when they're coming into engineering. Yeah. Uh, another question. Can they fail in their first year any of the paper? Um, if they uh, fail, would they be able to uh, continue into the professional year? Uh, yeah. So uh, what we'll do is, um, depending on how many subjects the students failed or courses, we'll work with the student to be able to retake and obviously continue. Um, but if that's not possible because the student is really, really struggling, um, then we'll advise the student on maybe what other programs they can do and maybe transfer some of that credit into another program, which could be science, for example. Um, but we're pretty confident that we have a huge amount of support for students to succeed. It's extremely rare that a student will fail everything and not be able to continue in the Bachelor of Engineering Honours. But if they do, there's a lot of support in place to help them to get back on track. I see. Another question. Am I right that if they pass, not say you, you don't set a say average B plus you must achieve in your first year overall, or can they just pass through all the papers and it's able to continue to uh, uh, or to progress to this first professional year? Yeah, I Is think. Uh, right? what's, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty confident that they um, should be able to. Um, achieve a certain grade and then they can continue um, but let's take that off um, today and what yeah. I can do is I can confirm with our student centre um, and the associate dean undergraduate and get back to you would that be okay yes thank you no, yeah. no worries thank you thank you thanks a lot no worries so I'm just going to show you um, this is just a social space for students so again uh, this is normally I would say probably where most students come to eat if I'm honest so this is on level three really cool space um you've got vendor machines you've got microwaves over there you've got hot water that's Mele. she's one of our student support advisors <laughs> um and then we've got some table tennis everybody likes a bit of table tennis right mm. am i the only one no i'm kidding no nope. so i, 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 <laughs> I, like I normally I like come it. down here yeah i normally come down here to challenge the students um because i'm i'm probably the best at table tennis um <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> um, but in the building, there's lots of these areas as well. So these study areas. Are so can the student, uh, can the students, uh, you know, use this area, uh, you know, every time? I mean, every day, or is this open uh, this in the weekdays? Uh, no, this is open every day, including the weekends. Um, the building's not open 24/7. Um, there are closing times to the building. Um, and there is certain access required for some of these rooms. But in general, throughout the week and the weekend, students can come and access these um, study areas because obviously when we get round to maybe when coursework's due or when an assignment's due, that's mm. when students will probably will likely want to use these, um, you know, at the weekend or in the week. But really cool space, a little bit of uh, football, table football as well. I do want to show you this other area, which I find really cool. Um, Again, apologies if I'm walking quicker. You'll probably notice that there's a lot of windows in, in the building. Uh, and that's, again, because what we want students to see is engineering in action at every point. Um, you know, it is a practical subject. Um, and it's really important for students to be able to see that. So, again, here's one of our labs. As you can see. And for the lab, the students can use, I mean, outside the class, right? Or just while the class is going, I mean, is the students of, you know, be able to use the lab outside the um, class? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so in some cases, they'll be able to book the lab if possible, um, so long as it's free. And, you know, if they're doing an assignment and they need to use some of the equipment and materials, then that's definitely, definitely possible. 
and this building is for uh, both uh, undergraduate and also postgraduate program, right? Yes, that's correct. Mm. Yeah, for undergraduate and postgraduate students. Okay, let's get to level four. I will lose weight climbing these stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Morning exercise, Ryan. It's okay. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so this is coming out into one of the atrium areas, and again, it's just a nice, a nice area. But what's actually really um, important to notice here is I'm actually standing in the the old engineering building here, which is this side, and then if I pan. This is the new engineering building. So they are connected. Oh, great, great. So again, at every point where possible, there's student spaces on the side. So students can get together, collaborate on assignments or revise whatever needs to be done. And again, there's over 200 different clubs and societies at the University of Auckland. But there are a lot in uh, the Faculty of Engineering. And you can see there's one here, which is a really cool competition. This is the New Zealand Robot Olympiad. Um, so again, some students are probably competing now, so I can't go in there. Um, but it's, you know, again, just something that's always seems to be happening in engineering, which is quite cool. But let's go uh, have a look at one, yeah, one of these. Right. Do, do this building has its own library or the students, if they want to use library, they have to go to the library that you mentioned before? Yeah, so if students need to use the library, they need to go and use the library, which is centrally located for the whole university. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the, the thing is, you know, for a lot of the time, we have one of the largest collections of material available to students online uh, in the world, actually, for our students. So, um, you know, having buildings full of books actually is, is becoming less of a, of a need. It's actually more of a case of what can students access online. Um, and that's not just in our library. That isn't just... Uh, books and research material that students access is actually a lot of programs and software particularly for engineering that students need to use on their computer and again that's made that's made uh, available to students as well as part of their studies um, which is quite nice uh, Brian, uh, Ryan I also yep. have a question uh, this is live virtual right so uh, seem to be quite empty everywhere in the uh, in the precarity is it because everybody is online studying or is it a semester break very, very good question. And do you know what it is? It's semester break. Oh. So we we have just, um, so this week is orientation week. So if I was actually taking you around this morning, yeah, if I was taking you around this morning, um, you would, there was hundreds, uh, if not thousands of students on campus because there was lots of orientation schedules happening, uh, new students starting in semester two, which is really, really exciting. Uh, but unfortunately it wouldn't have been a convenient time uh, for you guys so we've got you here late afternoon um, and most of the orientation programs have finished but next week my goodness this room would be absolutely packed so I'll just show you this is just one of our lecture halls in the new engineering building yeah no problems at all thank you for your question oh don't uh, don't let the lights go out hang on <laughs> hi Ryan there we go there is light uh, hi yes. Ryan yeah hi uh, how are we doing is uh, any uh, every room have a QR code? Yes. Can you show? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. And you'll see here as well that in all of our classrooms, um, there is obviously COVID 19 uh, conditions uh, mm. for all of our students just to ensure um, that we're, you know, keeping everybody safe as possible when they are attending on campus. But just a reminder to everyone here. New Zealand, extremely lucky. Um, I think voted twice now or is seen as or ranked um, one of the safest countries in the world right now uh, with COVID-19. There is no community transmission in New Zealand and there hasn't been for a very, very long time, uh, which essentially means that everyone's able to go about their business as normal as possible, which is, um, you know, a massive luxury. And I, I hope that for, for you, wherever you are joining from, that you're able to experience that really, really soon as well. Um, now, let's we're going to exit the lecture hall. Hopefully, you got to see that, which is really cool. I won't show you in all of our lecture halls, but it just gives you an idea of some of the larger lecture halls that we have. Um, and again, that's normally uh, a designated space for students who are doing their first year. Uh, because again, the class sizes are a lot larger. 
So one of the cool things I did want to show you was a postgraduate space that we have. So let's go down here. Walk through here. Looks like we've got some students who are playing a game outside. So I'll try not to get hit by one of these sandbags that they're <laughs> chucking around. I'll turn the camera around so you can see anyway. Looks like this might be part of orientation. Look at the next instruments playing. So we'll go through here. Oops. <laughs> Nearly hit. <laughs> there we go. So, so this actually is not. Uh, this this is this will be available to students if they come to the postgraduate study in engineering. This is a designated space for um, postgraduate engineering students. So just come in here. And again, really lucky because there's not many students here. Because uh, classes start next week, so I can just show you around. Uh, Ryan, I realized the building is really huge. Yeah, I mean, is is it uh, sometimes happen the students get lost sometimes? <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely, really, really huge. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think what's really really good is that orientation. There's lots of activities and. Um, games to get students used to the rooms and how the building operates and works so that actually um, you know if they if they do get lost it's actually quite easy to find and I think what's really nice about engineering is everyone's really friendly so you know if yeah. a student is lost or is worried they really can just come and ask one of the staff or another student and uh, there, we'll show hmm. show the students where they, where they need to go. There is one question Ryan from yeah. the agent so do, do the students need to register before they're using the lab? Yes, who, whom should they contact? Um, yeah, if I'm honest, they don't need to worry about that. Um, that is something which will be explained to the student when they're taking a class which has a lab session. So uh, normally the teacher or academic who's running a class will advise students on which students can allocate the lab at what times. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not something that students will need to worry about right now, definitely. Uh, because the lecturer um, of that course will explain to the student um, how they need to book the lab. If that makes sense? Yep. Okie dokie. Right. And how about the Let's student go. support our, uh, our room? Where yes. you're going I'm there? Going to, I'm going <laughs> there right now. Okay. So very timely. <laughs> so um, just coming out of this atrium, coming into the old building, and all of our student support services are located just to my right. So these are nice little breakout areas for students to discuss any issues that they need with certain staff. This is a reception area, um, normally helpful for if students get lost. And if we keep following around, we have other support teams as well for our students. And they're all quite busy with orientation at the minute. So we have a student support team that sit in this uh, room here. We have an employee liaison manager which sits in this room here. Um, for those of you who don't know, for the Bachelor of Engineering Honours, all students need to complete 800 hours work experience. Okay, yeah. and we help students with that. And our employee liaison manager will work with industry about sourcing really, really awesome opportunities for our students. But the most important thing is, um, is that engineering companies in New Zealand know that students have to do this because this is to meet the Washington Accord standard. It's part of that accreditation. Um, so engineering companies actively advertise internship opportunities to students because it's a great recruiting tool for them uh, mm -hmm. because students have already got great experience with, um, with the company. And then when they finish their degree, they're more likely to go and work for that company at the end, which normally happens as well for our students. Those internships are generally paid as well. Uh, quite handsomely um, mm. so again that's a, a really great added bonus uh, yeah. for students who are doing engineering now this here I just want to quickly show you before you jump in Christian this here is the engineering student centre <laughs> yeah. and I did say to the guys if they were here to come and say hello could you could you grab the um, undergraduate and postgraduate team for me 
So they're just going to come and wave because this is the best team. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really, if students have any queries or concerns, um, as soon as they start their studies, this is probably the place that they will come to. Um, to, to really get those issues resolved um, at any point. Any questions in the in the uh, in the chat? Yep. There is. So, do the stuff yeah. partially work from home when the students begin the class later, or all the staffs already work full time to help the students if students need for advices? Um, no, everyone's everyone's working full time. Mm, okay. Yeah, quite simply. Sorry, this is, this is, yeah, maybe I'll come in. This is Bella. Hello, hello, hi. Uh, hey. They're saying hi, they're saying hi. No, <laughs> we'll come in, we'll say hello to the team. Yeah, yeah, we'll come in. This is, this is exclusive access. Okay. This is, this is where it all happens. <laughs> so we'll just say hello to the team. Anyway. Sorry. Hi. Say hello. This is our PG team. Hello. Hello. Uh, hi. Hello. So any of, so for those of you that have questions normally about postgraduate study, Hello. these are these are the ones that are answering those questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi. Thanks, so yeah. Thank you. Everyone's saying uh, hi. Yeah. And then you've you've met Bella, but normally all of our undergraduate teams sit this side. So all of those questions coming through, this team answer those. Thanks so okay. much. Cool. Okay, we'll leave the we'll leave the room. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. And I'll show you the outside of a really, really cool space as well. Uh, so, is, uh, um, Ryan, so besides yep. the internship program, if the students, because uh, for international students, they are allowed to work, uh, to do part-time job for 20 hours per week. So, yes. Um, I mean, whom should they contact, I mean, to uh, get... Uh, if there's any opportunities for part-time yeah, or they find by themselves or? Yeah, it's a combination of both really. Um, I mean, there are places that are advertised um, at the university for part-time job opportunities. And normally a great place to start is actually the CDES team. So that's the Careers, Employ uh, Careers Development Employability Service. So that was actually, mm -hmm. if you remember at the beginning yeah. of the tour, I showed you that mm -hmm. building on the side. And if I actually turn my camera now, because where we're located, it's actually across the road there. So okay. I'm not sure if you can make out what the uh, wording is on the window on the other mm -hmm. side of the road, but that is the Careers De Development Employability Service. That's normally a really good place to start um, because, again, it, they, they help students with basic things like how mm -hmm. to create a CV or how to write a CV or mm -hmm. cover letter, interview techniques, really developing those soft skills that students need yeah. in order to get that interview or even, you know, just apply for a job opportunity in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Students can work 20 hours a week, as you said. Yeah. And yeah. the really, the, the good thing is um, uh, at hol holiday time, um, so semester breaks or whenever it is, students can actually work full time. Mm. How about the uh, on-campus accommodation? Is it near the building? Yes, yes, definitely. We have, um, mm -hmm. I mean... Again, I'm in engineering now, mm -hmm. but you're probably about five, ten minutes. Walk up that way. We've got accommodation. And you're in the giveaway, sir. about ten minutes up that way, we've got uh, university halls and accommodation. Um, the best way I can put it is we actually have over 4,000 beds available to students. Mm -hmm. um, so a huge range of accommodation. And that's really different because we have self-catered, partially catered, um, or fully catered options for students mm -hmm. um, and, and normally what we advise students to do is in their first year of that undergraduate study it's a really good idea maybe to stay on campus because it yep. helps you with settling in helps you with making friends um, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know it helps you get used to the city but saying that if they've come to do foundation as well then they're already very very well prepared for their first year so they might want to seek help with private accommodation and again, they can contact our accommodations team because they have designated individuals who help mm -hmm. students and advise students on private accommodation options as well. Okay. And where can students find, um, you know, any uh, restaurant or cafe nearby? There is loads of options. Um, so, I mean, we can't go over there right now because, um, yeah. again, it's a very large campus. But inside that building on the other side, um, there are a huge range of uh, cafes, lots of different options for food. 
Um, there's uh, Chinese food, there's Japanese food, there's um, Indian food, um, there's Malaysian food, um, there's Italian, uh, you name it, it it's, it's all there. So there's a lot. Um, in the Faculty of Engineering, we have a small cafe, um, okay. which is located there, and I'll walk past it shortly. Yeah. But just before I move on, because I'm here, I just wanted to show you this space. We can't go in because there's lots of stuff happening at the minute. But this is our unleashed space. So this really is uh, innovation and entrepreneurial hub. Um, it's actually very, very, it's world leading um, because if you look here on the side, these are all the students who've been inducted and potentially would have started lots of different businesses and, and, and sought funding as well to start their business based on obviously what they've developed in this innovation and entrepreneurship hub. If you can see in there, you probably can't actually, that's actually a maker space. So there's like 3D printers, sewing machines, uh, vacuum machines, um, lots of other different types of digital equipment, as well as programming software equipment available to students. And what it's meant to be is a place where students can get together um, and make something. Whatever you're thinking, whatever, maybe you've got an idea in your head and you're going, wow, how could, how could you know, that would be so cool. Um, this is a place where, you know, for free as a student, uh, you can come here, seek advice and help. Um, as well as training and you make it and if oh, okay. it's a really good idea um, then they've got lots of uh, fantastic entrepreneurs people who have made it out in industry who help students bring it to market okay uh, that's awesome yeah so it's really really cool yeah so hundreds, thousands of students have come through the uh, process and so many different businesses have been created um, uh, from that very uh, engine room there which is really, really exciting. Um, but for engineering students, it's, it's a great opportunity because it's in the engineering building. Um, yep. So yeah. Oh, uh, Ryan, so I have, um, I mean, one student sort of asking me about, you know, because um, uh, there's a girl, uh, I mean, uh, she wants to apply for engineering program and she is uh, quite insecure about the program because, you know, mostly the engineering program is involve a lot of men, you know, yeah a lot of men students rather than women mm -hmm. so yeah can you really good a bit about, mm. yeah really good question and just before i do that i mean i'm just going to talk i'm just talking outside the cafe now so um the cafe sh shut early today because again the students are not here on campus but literally as soon as you walk in there's a cafe available to students which they can access um, but as i said two minutes over the road you've got probably over 10 different restaurants okay. and, and cafes so lots of food available so really good question about the females engineering and i think it's something that we take extremely seriously here at the faculty of engineering and it's something we want to change and so we actually have a designated women in engineering team we have one of the highest proportions of females in engineering um, at university um, in australasia uh, we're close to 30 percent of our student cohort is female which is really really great uh, but we still want to get that higher um, okay. But yeah, we have a dedicated uh, women in engineering team who run lots of different sessions um, before uh, they come to university, um, as well as champion those who are in industry, mm -hmm. academics, um, as well as student events uh, throughout the year, uh, just, just for, for females in engineering, um, which is really, really awesome. But those subjects are actually, uh, sorry, those events are so popular that they have to expand it because mm. um, the, uh, you know, the rest of the students want to come in and join in as well. So uh, that's how cool the events are. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, let's let's go to a lab, I think, because that's what I want to show you as well. Um, and I'm going to take you to one of the uh, electrical and electronic engineering labs. Mm. Um, and one of those is a soldering lab. Actually, when I walked past, there was a class happening. So we might, we might see... Um, something in action should be cool i think you start to enjoy being a youtuber ryan <laughs> oh really <laughs> we sh you're getting we good see at it we should see my friend <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh there's one questions uh ryan from the agent so any chance to see the structural engineering lab yes we could try and go on level one um that that could be an option so we won't, I won't spend too much time here. Oops, change the camera. 
So this is one of his soldering ones. So see some so which major? There. Which major are you using this lab? Uh, electrical, uh, electronic. Oh, electrical. Elect okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you'll see here that the class that is normally in this room. It's Electeng one hundred and one, electrical and digital systems. I'm not sure if you can see that on there. Yeah, we can. Perfect. So you'll see. So this is a class um, that all students in year one will do. And again, this is some of the MDLS labs for the electrical and electronic engineering department. We'll go down just so you can see some of the equipment available to students and what they're doing. So again, here, this looks like programming. It's obviously programming some of these robots to deliver, I guess, a payload uh, mm. to a certain um, area on, on that uh, map yeah. there, which looks mm. quite cool, actually. Do they work, uh, I mean, do they use it individually or in a group, Ryan? Um, students uh, normally work in groups. Okay. Because when you're going out into work, it's very rare that you're just working on your own. Um, and, you know, one of the key uh, tasks as an engineer that you'll do is you'll be working on projects with others mm. and you have to deliver those projects together as a team. So that's essentially why, um, you know, a lot of the assignments um, is group work. Uh, but there is individual work as well. So exams, there could be individual coursework or essays that students will need to do. As, yep. as part of their studies. Now, mm -hmm. now, I could keep going up every single floor, but if I, um, what we're going to try and do is go to this um, structural, we'll try and find a structural lab, um, okay. which should be on level one. So let's see if we can Hi, do that. Yep. Hi, Ryan. It's mm -hmm. uh, structural next to civil as well. I think, uh, is it the same lab? Civil? Um, yeah. It will be it'll be very similar, yes. Okay. Now I'm getting an elevator. We lost uh, Ryan. Please do uh if the internet cuts. Wait. Yeah. You're back. I'm back, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I do you know it's funny. I just said I just said when I was in the lift that I'm really sorry if uh, if it cuts out. Um just quickly show you chemical and materials lab because there's no one in here. Uh, I think you know what's really important for everyone to note here is that no expense has been spared at the equipment available to students. Which was so you are in the first floor, is it? I'm in the second floor. Oh, second um, floor. But I just wanted to show you quickly. This is just one of our chemical and materials labs. Just for your information. All right. Cool. Cool. Okay. Now let's go down. <laughs> this is the first time. So sorry, guys, if the camera again is unstable. I do apologize. <laughs> oh, you, you're getting good. You're getting better. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can access one of these labs. Okay, and the reason we know we're in something civil related is because of the floor. Mm. Because in construction or structural engineering, there's a lot of uh, sand, mud, other stuff that would need to be happening. So these are some of the wet and clean rooms. Now, let's see if we can go in here. We can, perfect. So you'll see here, hasn't got all the equipment here, mm -hmm. but you'll see this is where they might be testing different types of um, materials, uh, for structural and civil engineering. Um, and then there needs to be a place to get rid of the waste, which could be cement or something else. But this is just give you an idea of um, one of these rooms as an example. 
But again, you'll see that the class sizes will never be absolutely, you know, too large. Mm -hmm. It's always small groups of students. All right. So you're probably looking here at 15, 20 students max. Um, he'll be taking some of these lab sessions. All right. Uh, another question, Ryan. So yep. uh, is, it, is, is the Wi-Fi available for all students in all buildings? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so no matter where they are on campus, um, they'll be able to access the, the Wi-Fi. And um, another cool thing is obviously we have something called EDU Roam. So even if students were potentially at another university, so long as they have an EDU Roam account, then they should be able to access the Wi-Fi at another university if they needed to. Um, so that's good as well. Good option. Cool. Good idea. So um, just so everybody's aware, so the um, first five floors of this building are teaching learning spaces for mm. undergraduate and postgraduate students. The top six floors are for um, postgraduate and uh, researchers. Now we also have another campus called our New Market Innovation Precinct. Um, my advice to everyone here today is if you do want to get uh, an insight as to what happens uh, in that amazing campus, and I'd love to do another live tour again to show you around, is um, go on YouTube, there's a great video, and you can see all of the equipment uh, where we have one of the largest civil and structures halls, so testing facilities, um, in, again, in Australasia, but most definitely New Zealand. Um, we have, you know, a huge shaker table as well for, I think someone popped up a question about earthquake engineering. Um, so we have yeah. a huge ginormous um, shaker table there, which again can test different materials and structures on that uh, to see, you know, you okay. know, what the impact of an earthquake could be on, on, mm -hmm. on something like that, which is cool. Um, just one other thing to highlight, just that that's very practical is um, every floor has a printer. So obviously students, if they need to print stuff out, they can set up their own printing account um, and then yep, print the stuff that they need or an assignment off. So to enter the building, the students need to have their access card, right? I mean, the students so, or... Yeah, so for certain rooms, potentially they'll need to have an access card. Um, but in most cases, you know, all of the rooms, um, they, they won't need that because the rooms will be open. Um, Okie dokie. So I realised that that was, um, again, quite a brief tour. But hopefully it's a lot more fun than just listening to me in a PowerPoint. Uh, yeah. So you get a nice really walk around great. and really see what's great. happening. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Yep. Uh, may I interrupt again? Is this... No. Uh, the engineering block is a new, right? Is a new building, right? Yes. So this, so the building that I've just shown you today, uh, predominantly, apart from the student support services, is the B four hundred one brand new uh, engineering building, which opened in early twenty twenty. Yes. So yes, that's uh, I thought, because well before that, I had visited uh, Auckland. Uh, okay. I have been shown to the Faculty of Health and Medicine, but because of the time, uh, yeah. I wasn't uh, shown to this Faculty of Engineering. Uh, second question, what mm -hmm. sure students are still not able to go online for their engineering degree, right? So all of our programs pretty much, so I would say 95% of our programs at the University of Auckland are available online. Now for students who are finishing up their foundation program at Up Education, they will be able to access um, the Bachelor of Engineering Honours online. It's available online for students. Um, so, yeah. For first year? Or if they first, say... First, they year, say second, first year, second year, and third year. Yeah, the news so far I received is, is that next February is not possible for students to travel to New Zealand again because it was announced that the visa application is suspended. Uh, yes. So just to give you, um, yeah, so they've, they've um, essentially, the issue they have with issuing visas or allowing people to apply for visas is they have to guarantee that people will have the opportunity to um, arrive in country. It's a, it's a legal obligation. And because they can't do that, then they legally cannot allow people to actually apply for a visa. So if that was ever to change, 
then um, anybody will be able to obviously apply for a visa as soon as they're as soon as there's the opportunity to be able to arrive in New Zealand. But because of the border closures, that's not an option. Now, what I anticipate is that, you know, uh, New Zealand's already invited 1,250 international students in country. Yeah, I know. Um, and those were re normally returning students. So students have already made a start in their programme. And that's why we're advising students to make a start in their programme, because then they will be considered a current student. I now, see. based on the current government policy of the first two cohorts that they've invited, we anticipate that more cohorts uh, will be invited um, as and when is possible. Um, we're currently in the process of uh, just finishing off or inviting the remainder of the, the thousand who were invited mm. most recently. And mm. once that has been exhausted, I assume that they will um, announce another cohort, which should have probably less stringent conditions. Yeah. Uh, if, let's say, students uh, apply to go online, uh, what about the laboratory work? Because some of these other degree that has a practical component, and students mm -hmm. not able, like for, for example, teaching degree, they are not able to go online. Re really, really good question. And um, the answer to your question is, for courses which are heavily lab-based, then they will not be available online. Um, but that, yeah. isn't in the, that isn't in the first year of study. Okay. Yeah. Um, the classes that do have lab, or workshop-based uh, experiments, or um, yeah, workshops that need to be done by students. What the teachers have uh, made it so it is available online for students to still participate in some of those types of activities or classes. For example, it could be that the uh, lecturer has recorded the experiment yes. and will allow students to engage live with that experiment as it's happening. Or it could be that in some cases. Uh, they have used uh, a different type of software, which again allows students to engage in the workshop or experiment activity um, as and when it's happening. Um, yeah. But we totally appreciate that it is not the same as being in class. Uh, it's, it, it, it's not, you know, it, it, it can't be. Um, but where possible, the students are still learning the same outcomes that are required for those courses. I see. I can't, I can't imagine a student going for civil war and they need to do um, to, to, to evolve in some sort of experiment uh, that need to use cement or anything like that. How, how can they, you know, do it? Yeah, well, I think that's the good, it's, it's a good question, but you should look at the courses that students need to take in their first two years. I see. Um, not all of, not, not every single course will require students to do lab and, and workshops. I see. Um, that just isn't, just isn't required um it's you know uh, i had a student once say to me i'm not sure if i can do civil engineering because i i don't think i can carry bricks and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> you know as a civil engineer you'll be telling other people to carry the bricks not you no they um, do doing tests you know like block course tests and exactly yeah, yeah yeah so uh, i think the really important thing is if you look at the courses that students take in their first year what we're trying to do in their first year is give them a good solid foundation of what engineering is, because actually it's not a subject that students are normally exposed to in high school or in college or in foundation. You know, the, the core principles of engineering is physics and calculus, which is obviously something that they will take in the foundation certificate. Uh, but engineering as a subject is just not a subject at high school or college. So what we're trying to do in that first year is give students a really good foundation in, in, in regards to what engineering is all about. Yes. Let them gain exposure to the different or the 10 different specializations because someone might come in saying, I am going to be an electrical engineer. That is what you know, I've been put on this earth for. However, they take Electeng 101, for example, and they say, my goodness, this is not for me. I love yes. chemical and materials engineering. And so it allows students to, okay, I tried it and actually I prefer that specialization. And then obviously they can change and, and, and specialize for the next three years in um, chemical and materials in, as of year two. Um, so yeah, check out the courses in the first year. You'll notice that there isn't a lot of lab-based stuff. Okay. And if there is, if there is, uh, we've um, created an environment which will still allow students to be actively engaged in some of those workshops or lab sessions. So to sum up, your advice would be, if students are interested to uh, start their engineering degree first year, uh, mm -hmm. qualifying student of course, so they just apply, apply now and go online, right? Yes, yeah, 
definitely. Okay. Yeah. Making the start is, is the best thing. I, I think, particularly at undergraduate level, if you have a gap, um, not that it's an issue, but I just think for, you know, um, what are you going to do in that time? Are know? they allowed to have, uh, how, how long is, are they allowed to have the gap? Is it a year or? or uh, the gap. Let's say the they gaps. finish, uh, say yeah, they the, finish at L level. Yeah, so the gap is absolutely fine. We, we don't discriminate against someone having, you know, two, three years after yeah. their college or high school or foundation certificate. But just, just a reminder that some qualifications obviously have a, um, uh, you know, uh, a time period that they're valid for. For example, English language requirements, you know, those are normally only valid for like two years. Yeah. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. But yeah, generally, we don't discriminate on gap. That's, that's absolutely fine. But I just think if you're someone who is just turning 18 years old, um, you know, it's probably good that you, you start your undergraduate study as soon as possible. Yeah. Let's, um, another question I don't, I don't know whether you can answer this or not, but this is uh, Malaysia right now. I'm from Malaysia, actually, that mm -hmm. I recruit Malaysia. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, the government is arranging for students who are interested to go overseas. The study to have the vaccination for two mm -hmm. doses. Well, yeah. do you have any uh, information about New Zealand government who allowed students who has two doses for vaccination, whatever vaccine it is? Um, not at this current stage. So if I'm completely honest, the New Zealand government haven't really released um, what the policy will be as to allowing vaccinated people to come into country that hasn't yet been released. Um, what I believe is, you know, the vaccination program is currently happening in, in New Zealand. And once the majority of the population have been vaccinated, they can yeah. probably then start outlining, okay, well, how will, cause, because the country's protected them. Um, and so if there ever was an outbreak, it should be very limited because the majority of the population have been vaccinated. So, you know, I, I, it's just, it's too early to tell what that process will look like. But the current process is students who are eligible to return yeah. to New Zealand will be contacted by the university and then the process mm -hmm. will be explained to them on how they get their visa, mm -hmm. what MIQ looks like, you know, what the whole process looks like. Yeah. Um, so it's not something that students need to worry as of yet. Our advice is for students to make a partial start or a full start in their studies online mm -hmm. until they can make that safe transition to New Zealand, uh, which we will inform them when they're able to. But the when is still uncertain. The, the date or the day, the year that they can come in or the yeah. semester is it still uncertain. No answer, that, right? That, 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 that is true, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. You know, as I said, I think once the country is fully vaccinated, so yeah. which should be by the end of this year, um, then they can start making those decisions about opening the border, being more relaxed mm. about border restrictions. Um, yeah. so, so that's that's my my hope is that at the end of the year that's when the government will say right okay based on all of the data from say europe the us how they've opened travel and how vaccinated people have got around how that's affected transmission all of those things the new zealand government can then make an informed decision about how do we open borders safely uh, for particularly for international students to come to come here uh, and we anticipate that students have already made a commitment to their studies in new zealand um, should surely be prioritised over students who haven't yet made a start in their studies. Yeah, now it's the new student that I'm talking about. It's those who are there, they are there, I, all my students. So uh, thank you so much, Ryan. Actually, there's so many questions students ask, but later on, maybe I'll write email to you for some other questions. Thank you. Yes, so much. you're more yeah. than welcome to do so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank so, Ryan, there is uh, one last question from the Asian. So, during this COVID 19, is there any decreasing numbers of jobs for international students in engineering field? Uh, no, not at all. Actually, we've had the opposite with engineering. Um, what's happened is uh, money at the minute. Sorry about that noise. Um, yeah. Money at the minute is very, very cheap. And so uh, to boost the economy, but also worldwide, a lot of that is being spent on infrastructure. So there's a lot of projects at the minute which are happening and there's simply not enough engineers. So our students are incredibly in demand and that's not just civil, structural, that's all engineers. 
um, there's a lot of change which is happening. People are really having to change their business model or you know, how they operate. And mm. with that becomes a lot of projects which need to be led and delivered. And the um, projects, uh, the people who need to lead those projects are obviously engineers. Mm. So, um, you know, really good opportunities for our students. I think one thing to highlight is the University of Auckland is number one in New Zealand for graduate employability. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a measurement of, you know, how successful our students are attaining work post completion of their program. Uh, but not only that, we're also one of the top in the world. So we're ranked in the top 100 universities in the world for graduate employability, mm-hmm. which again, just speaks volumes of our students, our graduates, who are gaining fantastic job opportunities post completion of their program. But I oh, think for, engine- for engineers, the fact that, you know, it's a profession. You are officially an engineer at the mm-hmm. end of your studies, and you've also completed uh, most likely two internships with two, I'm sure, very good engineering companies. Mm-hmm. Our students are ripe for the plucking uh, for, okay. for job opportunities. And to put it into context, um, industry actually pays the university to come and talk to our students. Mm-hmm. So That's that just cool. gives you uh yeah an idea of of how attractive our students are to to employers yep okay. uh so ryan uh, one last question from me so mm-hmm. i mean for the um, all uh, i don't know if uh, whether you know the answers or not so for the all the international students uh already based in i mean in auckland um, yep how about the vaccinations i mean do they get the vaccination for international students or yeah so every everyone in new zealand will receive free vaccination Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's the government policy. So everyone in New Zealand will receive a free vaccination. And as soon as it's your time, um, you'll be invited to obviously make an appointment um, okay. to, to, to receive the vaccine. Okay. Uh, another question. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Yeah, no worries, so when, no worries. Uh, uh, when usually the industry come to recruit the students, I mean, to UOA? Oh, what a great, Which what a great month, yeah. Yeah, what a great question. We've actually got a careers development employability uh, led event. That's for internships, placements um, and work opportunities, which is happening on the 28th of July. So, um, yeah, I was going to see if I could walk up there because there's a huge poster (laughs) on the wall. So I was going to say, look, there you go. It's right there on the wall, but uh, I think it's a bit far away. So, um, but yeah, we've got, uh, uh, so they have events throughout the whole year. Uh, but normally there's university-wide events, which are absolutely ginormous. And all of the companies come in, students can go around and talk to them, really, really awesome career expos. But on top of that, the faculty will have its own one. Okay. So, so there'll be desi- two times, right? The, yeah. uh, the job yeah. fair and also the, the faculty. Yeah. So that, yeah. Exactly. So there's probably two a year uh, that they, that's university-wide. And then there's also ones in the faculty. And just a reminder that what's really good for engineering is the engineering companies want to want to offer internships to the students um, normally in the summer holidays. Okay. So, uh, you know, our summer is very different probably to some of yours. So it runs yeah. over December, you know, November, December um, and into January. And so that's normally when they recruit our students to do an internship um, at that company. All right. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. So, is there any other questions? I mean, from uh, the Asians or up education team? Any questions? I think there's no questions. Oh, good. <laughs> Let, so, so, yeah. Yeah. I was just going right. to say, so are we, what, what did we agree on? Was it $2.50 a question or? <laughs> it's $5 per question. <laughs> oh, wow. Fantastic. Okay. Good deal. Good deal, then. Good deal, right? <laughs> Ex- excellent. Um, no, well, if, if I mean, if there's no more questions, Christian, I just want to thank you and the team for organising today's event. I also want to thank everybody who's joined today. Uh, we really do hope you're keeping safe and well despite the yeah. pandemic. I know it's a real big issue. Um, all I can say is I believe light's at the end of the tunnel. We have something now which can combat the virus. Um, and I really, really do hope, you know, next year things will be extremely different. Yep. And we hope we'll so. look back at this whole episode as a, you know, a terrible nightmare. Um, yep. But we want to we thank all of you for all of your support. We really do appreciate it. And if yep. you do have any further questions after today, feel free to contact me or the Up Education team. And I'm sure we'll do our best to help you guys. Okay.
Thank you, Ryan, for your uh, assistance for today. Thank you for the tour. So, um, Ryan, yeah, you... but, sorry, let me just jump on here. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Ryan. We really had a great tour over the uh -huh. university. I feel really like I'm in the New Zealand and I really, really uh -huh. miss the great weather and, and, and everything about that, Ryan, um, in New Zealand, Auckland. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So, hopefully, we can uh, conduct another webinar for for UA live tour with this yep. from faculty. Um, yeah, so we really appreciate it. And lastly, before we let you and our agents go, um, may I suggest one thing? Um, yeah, this is a live tour, right? And it's really sad, only Ryan is opening his video and showing to <laughs> us. So why don't you just open the video and once like a 30 second and so let us take picture. Um, yeah, that will be, Really, really appreciate. So everyone, yeah. please open your video on, turn on your video on, just for a second. Um, yeah, that would be great. I agree, that would be awesome. <laughs> Hi, Quan, I didn't see you. <laughs> Hi, everyone, thank you. Hi, Hi. Hi everyone. Hey, there. Okay. <laughs> All okay, right. Thank you for opening. Thank you, Soha. So for, I can see you there, it's opening your video on. Thank you. Okay. Come on, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Thank you. Thank you, Meta. Thank you. And even if you're in your pajamas, we don't judge. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All can right. we take the picture now, Sue? Yes, I'm doing it now. Okay, All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, yeah, no, see thank you, you guys, guys later again. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Ryan. Thank, thank you, so you much, everyone. Sarah. Thank you, Thanks, Juan. Juan. Bye. Bye. See you later. Thanks. Bye bye. Everyone, Take care. bye bye. Take bye. Care. bye. bye.